as you might already know, I've been dealing with a wireless problem here recently. And by that, I mean the 2.4 GHz network was not working on my ASUS wireless router. So if you have watched my previous video, you know that at first I used an old wireless router, set it up as an access point, and used it only for the 2.4 GHz network. But if you also follow me on Instagram, then you know that afterwards I installed ASUS WRT Merlin firmware, and that actually fixed the problem. All of that somehow reminded me of a couple of years ago when I had a more or less similar problem but this time with the 5 GHz network. I mean, it wasn't like the 5 GHz network was not working at all. It was actually working but was absolutely unreliable. I mean unreliable to the point that I totally gave up on it and decided to use only the 2.4 GHz network. Until I actually found out what was going on and uh, fixed it and then I was able to use the 5 GHz band again with no problem. But first let's talk about what the problem was and then how it got fixed. Basically I was able to connect with no problem. The main problem was that this connection after some time would drop for no reason and it would take some time to reconnect and this actually could go on for many times a day. I mean there were some days that this was a little bit better but for the most part it was terrible. The 2.4 GHz network on the other hand didn't have this problem. I mean it had its own issues because it is older and more crowded and such and such but nothing as annoying as my 5 GHz network. Any ideas what could have caused this problem? Let me give you a hint. Back then my apartment was not that far from an airport. Ah. So the reason behind this issue was kind of an interesting one. I mean, at least for me. To be more precise, there wasn't any issue to begin with. I mean, nothing was malfunctioning or broken. And what was happening was absolutely expected behavior. Yes, from my point of view, I was getting randomly disconnected. But from the wireless router's point of view, or in my case, from the access point's point of view, this behavior was normal. In fact, the access point was programmed to behave like this. What? But why? We will get to that later, but first let's have a look at the wireless channels that are available in each frequency band of Wi-Fi. As you can see, there are 14 channels available in the 2.4 GHz band, but depending on the country and location, some of these channels might not be available. For example, in the US, there are only 11 channels available for the Wi-Fi. Now, if I want to set up my 2.4 GHz wireless network, I can either manually select one of these channels or have my wireless router or access point automatically select one for me. One purpose of a good wireless network design is to avoid interference as much as possible. For example, let's say my neighbor is using channel 1, then I'd better choose a non-overlapping channel, maybe channel 6, to avoid any interference with my neighbor's Wi-Fi. Now let's have a look at the channels in the 5 GHz frequency band of Wi-Fi. As you can see, there are more channels in the 5 GHz frequency band, 25 in total. And again, depending on each country and location, some of these channels might not be available. The same network design rules also apply here. I should avoid interference as much as I can. The good news is there are more non-overlapping channels available here compared to the 2.4 GHz band, which is good and gives me more channels to choose from. Therefore, it is less likely that my network would interfere with my neighbors. That is all good. However, there is another problem here. As you can see, some of these channels are marked as DFS channels. These are actually the channels that are used by radar. What? Radar? Yes, radar. Like uh, weather radar? Yes, you guessed it right. So if there's a radar nearby and I'm using the same channel as that radar, aren't they gonna interfere with each other? Let me explain. As I said earlier, each country has its own rules and regulations regarding the channels that you can use for the Wi-Fi. These rules though can change from time to time. For example, in the US, all these channels were available before 2009, and then because of the interference with radar, they were removed from 802.11 devices. But again later, the rules changed and they were allowed. 
So does that mean now we are okay with interference? No, that actually means now there is some kind of solution that can help us to avoid the interference. And that is nothing but DFS or dynamic frequency selection. Basically, the Wi-Fi devices must be certified to transmit in DFS channels, which makes them capable of doing certain behavior in order to avoid any interference with radar. For example, let's say my wireless router, or in my case my access point, is using one of the channels in question, and all of a sudden it detects radar signals on the same channel. Then it is going to stop any new transmissions on that channel. Also, it is going to disassociate any remaining wireless clients, and then select a different channel. I mean, there is more details in that process, but it is actually going to be beyond the purpose of this video. So, if I'm on a computer connected to the Wi-Fi using one of those DFS channels, as soon as radar signals are detected, I'm gonna get disconnected from the network until the access point starts broadcasting on a different channel, and then I can reconnect. If after some time the access point goes back to one of those DFS channels, this can happen again and again and again, which is really annoying from the client's point of view, and actually normal from the access point's point of view. And that is actually what was happening to me. So back then I was using a Meraki MR18 access point and it was actually configured to select the channel automatically and of course including the DFS channels. So because I was close to an airport, radar signals would be detected and that's why the access point was behaving like that. Actually, one time I looked at my wireless logs on my access point and could see many DFS event detected messages and that was when I realized what exactly was going on. So what I did was to exclude the DFS channels from the access point auto channel selection. This way the access point would no longer select any of those channels in the first place and that is indeed something necessary to do if you are close to a radar. Some wireless router or access point manufacturers decided to avoid this issue by just not utilizing any DFS channels in the first place. For example, my ASUS AC68U wireless router, as you can see, doesn't have any of the DFS channels here. Okay, so that was my story from back in 2016. And after I removed those DFS channels, I was actually finally able to use my 5 GHz wireless network. But funny story was that um, at the exact same time that I was having this problem, I was actually a tech support and I had many people calling in with the exact same problem and usually one of the first things I checked was to make sure there was no DFS channel problem. And yet it took me um, a few months to fix my own DFS problem. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting subject to talk about here um, on this channel. Uh, maybe it can help someone uh, with the same problem, um, I hope. I mean, I don't hope they have the same problem. I hope um, this video can be useful. I mean, you get it. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please hit that like button if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.